So we finished up chapter one, and that was, um, we know, if you recall, Luke wrote the, the book of Acts, and he was really just picking up where he left off in his gospel. It's it, the, the last couple words, last couple, couple verses of, of Luke mirror the first couple verses of acts and it was it was after jesus resurrection just before his ascension and he says that jesus appeared to the disciples and to many for a period of 40 days we remember from uh, paul's writing that he appeared to 500 at one peak at one time and, and he gave many convincing proofs that he was indeed alive and he it says there that he was telling them about the about the kingdom of god and and if you recall, you did that a lot throughout his his ministry. He said, you know, repent for the kingdom of, of God is is near. Repent and believe the good news. And uh, so naturally, the disciples right before uh, Jesus ascended, they, their natural question was, well, is it now at this time that you're going to restore the kingdom to, to Israel? Because that's what they remember after Jesus was crucified. They, they were kind of moping around. They said they thought that, that Jesus was the one that was going to. Uh, deem Israel, and so now that they see him resurrected, he thought, finally, you know, the kingdom, you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel, and he says, it's not for you to know, he said, the father's appointed that time, and it's not for you to know the time, he said, but in the meantime, I've got a job for you, he said, you're going to be my witnesses when the when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he said, John baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now, and we see, it's going to be about a week later, seven eight maybe nine days later and so in chapter two now we're getting to that that point now of what he was talking about this promise that he made gave them he said you know wait in, in jerusalem until you receive power from on high the promise from the father so we're going to see in acts chapter two that that promise and uh and after right after he told them that he was ascended back to heaven and we know from uh, several passages of scripture. That's when he received his kingdom. Uh, Luke 19, Daniel 7, Revelation 12 says that's when he received his kingdom. He went, went back to the Father, received his kingdom. Then he's going to come and he's going to return and he's going to begin to rule and reign as king. And when he does, it's it's not going to be pretty for those that, that have not become, uh, have not received him as Lord and Savior. And so that that's part of what I think I think we need to keep that in mind when we're witnessing as well. That yeah, you know, not don't just I mean, it's great to proclaim the good news. We are to proclaim the good news, the gospel, but there's bad news too. And you know, people need to hear the bad news too in order to be prepared for the good news. So when we're witnesses and and you know, you're, you're gonna you know, you need to sort of take people's spiritual temperature to see where they where they are. Some people are ready for the good news. Some people have to hear the bad news first. Um, there's many that you know think that aren't that there's a lot of people that don't even know anything about heaven or hell. They don't know anything about God's requirements for righteousness. So when we're witnessing, we need to, you know, it's 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 great to tell them, you know, God loves you, Jesus died for your sins. But until a person know, realizes they're a sinner and that there's judgment coming, you know that that good news may just fall on dead deaf ears. Um, yeah, we yeah you know, we can tell people yeah you, know, you can have a relationship with God, but if they don't know why they need a relationship with God, um, you know it's the the uh, message won't come across. And uh, and actually, everyone has a relationship with God. We have a relationship with him as our father, our savior, or we have a relationship with him as our enemy and judge. So, you know, we need to keep that in mind, not to, we need to give the full counsel of God. So anyway, um, so we're, that's, that was basically what chapter one was, that Jesus went back to the father and he said, there to go wait until several days from now till you receive power from on high. They went back to the upper room. I think Jamie picked up on that. They in verse 13, he went back to the upper room. Remember, that was the same place where they had the mm -hmm. last supper with Jesus, where he gave a lot of his instructions with them or instructions mm -hmm. to them. His last words. That's where he washed the disciples' feet, saying that that. He's going to continue to wash every sin away, every step we take. And he said, there's going to be 
a betrayer, one of you is going to betray me. And you finished up chapter one with that, that how they had to find a replacement for Judas because there had to be 12 apostles. And so that brings us up to chapter two, Acts chapter two. And the first verse there, first question is, what day is it now? Day of Pentecost. Day of Pentecost. Okay. And what, what does Pentecost mean? Anybody know what that what day Pentecost is, what the significance is? 50 days after the resurrection. Yeah. It's it's actually 50 days after the Sabbath of the Passover, which happens to be coincide with 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. Um there was there was a period of it well it's 50 days it's, it was actually seven weeks seven which is 49 days and then the day after is pentecost so it was a period of seven seven sabbaths and then pentecost um do you know what other name pentecost goes by it's one of the three main feasts that required all the all the devout jews to go to israel go to uh, jerusalem not israel go to jerusalem go to the temple every year Remember what else it's known as? It's the Feast of what? Feast of weeks. Um, if, yeah, I think it is Feast of Weeks. Um, it's all yeah, it is. It's called a Feast of Weeks because it's seven seven weeks. It's also called the Feast of Harvest or Feast of First First Fruits, and that's significant mm -hmm. because we're going to see this first fruits. We're going to see Peter pr preach this sermon. They have Pentecost, and there, how many thousand was it? Was it three thousand? I forget. There were several. There was a, quite a number that were saved, and that, and so that's, uh, uh, I guess, of significance there. They were, the, you could say, they're the first fruits of the of the church age, which corresponds with with P Pentecost, the feast of weeks, and the feast of uh, harvest or feast of first fruits, and. Uh, Let's see. Um, John, let's go back to John 14. Jesus spoke of this day back in John 14. This is in the upper room. This is right after the Passover. They had the he wanted to eat the Passover with them. This is right after that the Last Supper, the the washing of the feet. John 14, Jesus alluded to this day of Pentecost. John 14, starting in verse 15. John 14, verse 15, um, sorry, verse 16. Um, verse 15 is, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And we know what his commandments were. His commandments are to believe on the one the Father sent and to love the brethren. And so he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's believe on him, love the brethren. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. And who's the other helper? He's going to tell us there in verse 17. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, yeah. Now, here he calls him the Spirit of Truth, but it's the Holy Spirit. So, if you keep my commandments of believing on me, um, I'm going to ask Father. He's going to give you another helper, the Holy Spirit. And that, when he says another helper, that's that's uh, another just like me. It's, uh, I think, that, is that parakletos? Is that the word he uses there? It's called the comforter, the counselor, I think. And uh, it, But it means another helper just like me that that word can be translated helper or comforter or counselor uh, advocate intercessor it's, it can be translated in many, many different ways and the holy spirit serves all those those roles so he's going to be with you forever remember hebrews 13 5 he's never going to leave you never going to forsake you and he calls him the spirit of truth the world cannot receive him the the that's the lost world those that don't believe in jesus because it does not behold him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. So he's speaking of this day of Pentecost coming. Say, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He's talking about whenever I go back to the Father, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to come to you. He's going to come to us in the form of the Holy Spirit. After a little while, the world will behold me no more. He's because he's going to go back to the Father, but you will behold me 
because I live, you shall live also. So he's going to live in us because Jesus lives. We're going to live. So Jesus is, has an indestructible life. He's never going to die. He's never going to leave us. So we'll live as well. We're never going to die spiritually. And then here's verse 20. In that day, and I think that's referring to the day of Pentecost that we're talking about here in, in Acts 2, 1. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. That day of Pentecost, and that that day for everyone out since that day is, is the, really it's the moment, the day we believe in Jesus. We'll know that Jesus is in the Father, that we are in Christ, and Christ is in us. And can anybody testify to that? The day you were born again, that you knew Christ was in you, and you were in Christ, and Christ was in the Father? Yes. So, all right. So speaking of that day, the day of Pentecost, and also for everybody after that, that, that day you received Christ, you received the Holy Spirit. All right. So when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place and probably it's probably that upper room because they were in the upper room back in, in Acts 1 verse 12. They went up to the upper room. That seemed to be that seemed to be where they hung out a lot. Um, they were there. Remember, they were there. We just talked about that on the, the day of the Last Supper and so forth. So that must have been their must. And it must have been a pretty big room because there was 120 of them in there in at the end of Acts chapter one. So oh, and I, I answered question two. So <laughs> where were they? <laughs> the upper room. Probably the upper room. Yeah, they were all together, all together in one place, most likely the upper room. Yep. And uh, let's see. Yeah, and, that, and that's where that John 14 that we just read, that, that was in the upper room as well. Luke 22. Um, I put a note there for Luke 22. Let's, let's go there quick. It's Luke 22, verse 1 and 2. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. It's a feast of unleavened bread. Oh, one through thirty-four. Yeah. Okay. That was a feast of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover. This is right before Jesus was arrested and and crucified. Chief priests were seeking how they might put him to death. They were afraid of the people. And verse three, Satan entered into Judas. Remember that was the end of Acts chapter one. He talked about Judas. So here, Satan entered into us, and he was he was. One of the twelve, he that's where he discussed with the chief priests how he, how he might betray them. They were glad. They agreed to give him money. He consented. He wanted them for an opportunity to to betray Jesus. And uh, see, the day came for unleavened bread. The Passover had to be sacrificed, and of course, Jesus was sacrificed on the Passover. And let's see. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, "Go prepare the Passover." So we made it. it. Says, "Where do you want to prepare it?" said, when you've entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. And this is going to be the upper room here. You shall say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished upper room. Prepare it there. So it's a large furnished upper room. And they departed, found everything just as he told them, and they prepared the Passover. And again, it must have been pretty big if they hold 20 people. So... And then that's the Lord's Supper, where right before Jesus told them about the day of Pentecost coming. And it's down to verse 34, if you want to read that. But that's about where Jesus was betrayed and so forth. And that's where Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison and to death. And Jesus told me, you're going to deny me, etc. Okay, so anyway, that was up in the upper room. So that's probably where they are now, a large room. And so that's where Jesus told them to stay and wait for the promise. That, that was in Luke 24. If you're still in Luke 22, you see that down in Luke 24. That's where he told them to, to wait for the promise. Uh, Luke 24, verse 52 and 53. They were trying to see Yeah, they returned to Jerusalem. They were continually in the temple praising God. Let's see. Um, yeah, verse 49. I'm sending forth the promise of my father 
but you're to stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. All right. So they're in the upper room, one place, day of Pentecost, and what happened? Verse two. What? Heard a rushing wind. Yeah, great, great, a great rushing wind, a loud noise from, from heaven, like a violent rushing wind. I don't know if that would have been like a tornado. Wow. I don't know. What's that, Jamie? I said, wow. Yeah. I don't know. Do you ever hear a tornado where you say it sounds like a freight train coming? I don't know if, uh -huh. if it was something like that, maybe. I don't know. Wow. Violent wind. And they, they were sitting there and it filled the whole house. Violent wind, rushing wind. And what's significant about the it being a sound like a wind? What do you know what that word wind, the word is for wind? You ever hear Jesus uh, talk about wind before? Like in John chapter three with Nicodemus. Now you know where it's coming and where it's, and where it's going. Yeah. Oh. The word wind, it's it's pneumo or pneumo, I think it is, which is the same word for spirit, spirit or breath. And so it, Jesus used that that illustration with with uh, Nicodemus. Remember when he said you must be born born again, you must be born of the spirit. He said so just like with the wind, you don't know where it's going. He said it's the same way with those that are born of the spirit. So oh, wow. so then here in in Acts. That that rushing wind, which is going to be a picture of the the Holy Spirit coming, pneuma, pneuma, and anybody that uses air tools, you know, pneumatic tools and pneumonia, and I don't know, new, 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 is it pneumology? Is that the study of the Holy Spirit? New, I think it's pneumology, mm. study of the Holy Spirit, new, because of the word pneuma. But anyway, so they heard a loud rushing wind, violent, and. Uh, it was and it was sudden. And so then what did they see in the next verse? Tongues as a fire. Yeah, tongues as a fire. Now I don't know what that now it says as a fire. I don't know what that must have looked like, but distributing themselves rested on each one of them. Each one of them it rested on them. The great cloud was fire flashing with bright lights around it hmm. yeah and uh were you looking at uh exodus or ezekiel is that what you were mm -hmm. ezekiel 1 4 yeah ezekiel 1 4 there was a storm wind great cloud fire flashing forth continually and exodus 19 the lord descended on mount sinai in fire so sometimes you know God is pictured as as fire. He's a consuming fire. So maybe that's what was in, in view there, giving them another illustration that this is God, the, the, the Holy Spirit falling upon them. They needed a maybe they needed a, a vivid picture, not just the the sound, but a, a visual aid as well. But, well. In my study, the tongues represented speech. And the fire represents God's God's presence. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to see uh, something about speech occurring here as well. So maybe that's that's in view as well. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Um, okay. Tongues of fire. And let's see. And it. What? So what happened to them then? In verse four, question five. Hmm. they were filled with the holy spirit and they spoke in tongues yeah every one of them they were filled with the holy spirit began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the holy spirit was giving them utterance and we're going to see in a couple of verses here what those other tongues or other languages were but so the holy spirit gave them utterance began to speak in other tongues or other languages and so who who are they down to verse Five. It's question six. Who who was it? Who was who was living? Jew, devout men from every nation under heaven. 
Yeah, and it, it was significant. And if you were probably yeah, you were already on when we were talking about this earlier. It, it's it's only Jews at this point, but they're living in Jerusalem. They're devout men from every nation under heaven. And remember, this was one of the the uh, three feasts where all the devout Jews had to come to to Jerusalem for for the for this feast. So that would have that's what would have motivated them to come at to all to gather at this point. So they're from every every nation. Let's see what was what did it say there. Devout men from every nation under heaven. Uh -huh. So I don't know what that means, but every every nation under heaven, I guess. Um, uh -huh. So they came. They were coming from wherever. They coming for that feast. They were devout Jews. And let's see. Um, I had a, had a note there for Romans one six. Because the gospel, it's the it's the power of God to salvation to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. So it's coming to the Jews first. And we're going to see, I think it's I think it's Acts chapter eight and chapter 10, that it is going to go to the Gentiles, but it came to the Jews first. So all the Jews see the Holy Spirit first. What's that, Kim? No, I was just reading number five, every nation for every nation under heaven. I think it just means everybody. Yeah, I think so. They just came from all over the world. Yeah. From all over the world. Everybody, black, white, shiny, everybody. Well, at this point, they were just Jews, but it but it will it will be in Revelation. So it's just the nation, just the nation of Jews. It would just be the, at this point, it's just the ethnic Jews. Yeah. But it is the gospel is going to go to every every nation as far as every, you know every ethnicity, black, white, uh, Asian, whatever. But at this point, it's limited to the Jews. It's pretty evident that they were in all 15 of these countries that were represented there tonight. Hmm. And yeah. uh, they say that that period from the time Jesus was 12 years old till he was 28 or 30 and began teaching, they said many of those years he spent in Asia Somebody has researched deeper than anything we found in the Bible, but that and that's saying every is. nation under heaven, every nation under heaven. Mm -hmm. That that wasn't just the Jewish nation. I don't think I'm. I'm gonna have to research that a little bit more. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna have to look and see. Well, I, mean, I don't know what the, like looking at Greek and stuff to see because to me every nation under heaven. Mm -hmm. The developed world was small then yes. compared to today. Yeah. But there were Ethiopians, there were there were Egyptians, yeah. there, there yeah. were people other than Jews. Right. Jewish people. Right. And we're gonna and, see that the gospel is going to go to them when we get to chapter eight and chapter ten. Yeah. Nobody's left out, but it's to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles, as according to Romans 116. Oh, okay. Well, now, now they, were, they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, yeah. devout men. Okay, so it does say Jews and then yeah. devout men. Yeah. And remember, Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we sent out his disciples. He sent them initially just to the to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but then he does give them the commission to go to all the world. Um, I, I don't know why, you know, I'm not sure why God chose to do it that way to the Jew first. Um, I don't know. And we know that he chose yeah, because he felt like, it. yeah, he said it was not because they were anything special. We already knew exactly. That, right? exactly. They weren't special. He just picked somebody just like yeah. you pick somebody to read, read the Bible or something. Well, I, I mean, I think that's what. And remember, what he said, I he said I chose you. He says not because you were greater than anybody else. He, he said because you're the least. He, probably because they're the Israel is so is so insignificant is why I think is why God chose Israel. They're you know that tiny little nation, little insignificant nation in the middle of nowhere, but it's the center of the of the world really. Mm -hmm. Much focus on it and god said and he kind of does that doesn't he he picks the ones not the ones that are like kind of out there right you know, um the humble ones the yeah. what me like even with moses i don't even know how to talk you know right. and you want to choose me to lead these people out yeah amen yeah. 
If it was people that, who are not full of himself. Yeah. It was part a big part of the proof that God is God, that he could preserve Amen. the tiny yeah. nation for thousands of years that the rest of the world has tried to destroy out of jealousy. And trying to wipe them off the face of the earth for thousands of years. Do you think they'll ever be successful? No. No. <laughs> Yeah, if it was us, we'd we'd say the chosen people would be the United States or you know or Russia or China, one of these big powerful nations. But no, God's chosen people was this, this tiny insignificant nation of Israel. And He said, "What did He say?" He said, "It wasn't because you're so great, and it's not because you're so righteous." He said, "It was it was, it was to show it's basically it's to show God's power, God's sovereignty, that He is God, He is in control." So yeah. All right, and he chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yeah, I wonder yeah, what yeah. the number was as far as, you know, people who chose to live in Jerusalem, either as slaves or chose to assimilate with the Jews. We know there were other nationalities. Yeah. I wonder, did, did many of them disperse from Jerusalem because of the Roman oppression? Is that why they were scattered? I, I haven't... I don't have a lot of knowledge on that, why they were all you know, dispersed. I know there's been, you know, the, the so-called dispersion where they were dispersed to other areas. I don't, at this time, I don't recall why that, that happened. Well, verse 11 shows, uh, 10 shows that there were proselytes there, Jim, say, meaning that the Jews had gone out and uh, evangelized for sake of Judaism. Would that be fair to say? That, that's true that because even well even in uh you know prior to the cross that they the jews were supposed to go out and and proselyte proselytize they were anybody could come in into the the stranger could come in as long as they submitted to the what was it submitted to the covenant of circumcision and and uh had faith in the in the god of abraham isaac and jacob they would have been proselytes would have been converts so. Yeah, I think we'll be a little surprised when we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, we might not be surprised, but I, I don't think all of our ways that we think mm -hmm. are what we see or what we say right now. It's going to be, you know, yeah. and I will just leave it there. No, I, I agree with you. I think there's going to be a lot of surprises. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. Um, again, in, yeah, remember there also in John 10, Jesus did say, he said, I have sheep who are not of this fold, meaning that he has sheep that are Gentiles and Samaritans. So he did initially the gospel was just for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but Jesus made it clear. I have sheep that are not of this fold. And we're going to see as we go through acts that, that, that Jesus did, does indeed have sheep in other other nationalities. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. In Acts chapter eight is where we're going to see the Samaritans in Acts chapter 10. We're going to see the Gentiles. All right. Um, so question seven, where were they from? Every nation under heaven. Okay. Um, yeah. What? And it lists a lot of them there. See what, Let's see. 15. I counted them. There are 15 nations listed there. Okay. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamia, Judea. <laughs> Asia is mentioned there. Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, Rome. Oh, there you go. Yeah, both Jews and proselytes. So, yeah, Gentile converts. So, yeah. Okay, Cretans, Arabs. Uh, oh, so that's the every nation. Uh, I guess that's it. That there you go. They're, they're probably that's, that's probably right. It's probably the known fifteen known nations at that time. <clears throat> yep. And if you recall from Revelation five, it says that the Lamb redeemed. To God from His own blood, out of every tribe and tongue and and nation, people and nation. So the the tongue, every language. 
That might have been the most. I'm sorry, what was the answer to question six? History. That might have been the most the uh, most unifying day in all time Christianity because all the nations mm -hmm. there came as one under Christ, didn't they? Hmm. Yeah. Which is God, Christ's ultimate goal is that all nations will be one with He and the Father. Yeah. Amen. So yeah. Them on that very day, very first day, saw oh, that realized. Yeah. yeah. Kim, what was your question? Uh, what, what, what did y'all say number six was? Oh, uh, number six. Who was living there? Yeah. Oh, um, it was it was Jews, devout men living in Jerusalem, plus uh, from every nation, and we saw the fifteen oh. nations there. So yeah, it's yeah. it's devout Jews and and their proselytes from every nation, every known nation. It was every and it would have been every every Jew or proselyte that was devout that was coming to Jerusalem for that. For that festival, the festival of Pentecost, the festival of week, weeks, or the festival of, of uh, first fruits, however you want to call it. And let, let's, since subject came up, let's go to Revelation 5. Revelation 5, verse 9. This is a scene from heaven. And this is where the, uh, the four living creatures and the 24 elders... Uh -huh. Numerous times the four living creatures and the 24 elders are mentioned when the scene from heaven that in uh, Ezekiel and Isaiah, I think both talk about that as well. But anyway, they're they're around the throne. Let's see, I lost my place. Verse nine. Uh, they're all around the throne before the lamb, having a harp, bowls of incense, the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, worthy are you that this is the lamb. Jesus, worthy art thou to take the book, to break its seals, for thou wast slain and did purchase for God with thy blood men from, from actually it doesn't, the word men is in, in italics, you had purchased from every tribe and tongue and people and nations. You made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. That reign, of, yeah, and that ties back in with, uh, Acts chapter one as well, when they, they asked Jesus, when are you going to restore the, the the kingdom to Israel? It says here, you made them to be a kingdom and priests, and they will reign upon the earth. <clears throat> They're going to reign upon the earth when Jesus returns. And it's from every tribe, every tongue, every language, every, and every people, every nation, white, black, yellow, brown, every tongue, Spanish, Chinese, made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God. They will reign upon the earth. And they're going to reign upon the earth when Jesus returns as king. And it might have been as close as the nations of Islam, uh, Ishmael and Isaac ever came to be united because we can see that they're both in, here in this group. On yeah. this very first day of Pentecost. Yeah. That was probably as close as they ever came to having peace. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, if you're still there, and it says everybody's going to everybody's going to confess it, right? So the Ishmaels and the Jews, they're going to come in, right? They're going to accept Christ. Uh, some will, yeah. Every every knee is going to bow, whether voluntarily or involuntary, at some point. Right. Those that don't what get burned up or whatever, you know. Yeah. You know, no. That I mean, they're yeah. called, but. Yeah, there will be all all different yep. kinds. Yeah, if happen. you're still there in Revelation, let's go to chapter seven, where he's going to talk about it again. Um, first in verse four, we're going to see those from the from the tribes, the twelve tribes of Israel. In verse four through eight, mm. it's going to be uh, from every tribe. It's going to be twelve thousand from each tribe. And then down, if you jump down to verse 9, after these I looked, behold, a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, palm branches in their hands, cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, that's Jesus, 
All the angels standing around the throne, there's the elders again, the four living creatures again. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to our God forever and ever. And then one of the elders answered, saying, Who are these clothed in the white robes? Who are they and from where have they come? He said, my Lord, you know, he said to me, these are the ones who have come out of great tribulation, have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And it's for this reason they are before the throne of God. They serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne shall spread his tabernacle over them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the lamb in the center of the throne shall be their shepherd, shall guide them to springs of the water of life, and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. It's going to repeat. Amen. It's going to repeat some of that in, in chapter 20. Glory to the King. Amen. Glory to the King. So every nation. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for the blood. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm ready to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the Jesus had taught those parables uh, just a couple years before, and he was saying about the righteous will only truly shine after the wheat and jar, uh, tares judgment, final judgment day, when they're separated. He said, then the righteous will shine like the sun. Amen. And the disciples could have easily pictured that is about to happen mm. after Pentecost, couldn't they? Yeah. 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 We're kind of like that too, right? Every little thing that happens, we think, you know, Jesus is coming, right? Mm -hmm. All of the stuff that's even now, I mean, I'm thinking it, like all the things that are going on, like he could crack that sky yeah. any moment, right? Mm. And I think he wants us to look with that, you know, live with that expectation. Keep looking up. Yeah. Keep looking up. Yep. The, the worse things get, the more we long to be with Jesus. Well, now we see that. And the older I get, too. <laughs> <laughs> 2,000 years. Now that I'm a senior and citizen. But the next Sorry, go ahead, opportunity to see the sun shine like uh, the righteous shine like the sun will be when the millennial period gets here, and that might be uh, upon us. Couldn't be sooner than we think. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be reigning as king. Yep, and the the tares will be burned up, and the righteous will shine like the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So in the meantime, we need to be getting the word out, don't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I think we are. I think people are. Uh, uh, there, uh, there were a thousand people that people send me stuff from all over. A thousand people got baptized. Yeah. You know, look at all the people that came and got baptized at our church, other churches that I know. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're coming in. And so, you yeah. know, it's the Holy Spirit that woos people. Yeah. And, and well, and you know, I just think as you're saying that, I'm I'm thinking, yeah, when we see all these things <clears> on <throat> the news, that it, it's opportunities to for spiritual discussion when because people are talking about, you know, what hey, what's going on over in Israel and things like that. Well, you mm -hmm. know, hey, it's opportunity to share the gospel. Hey, you know, this is, could be signs that Jesus is coming, and you know, are you ready? Do you want to know how you can be ready for Jesus' return? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. From every nation under heaven. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait a minute. It was 100,000 people were baptized in, I got to find out what country this is. Oh Somebody oh sent me this. I, you one, one, I mean, you can kind of hear it. You can hear it. But 100,000 people this was were just baptized. Re just recently. They were at a river. Yeah. Um, And then I, I know other people that are in other like stuff in India, things like that. So I'm not just talking about America. This is happening around the world. People wow. are getting uh -huh. saved and baptized. Wow. A hundred thousand people. That was a lot of people. I, I mean, they were at a river 
You know what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. Wow. It's getting close, y'all. Yeah. The king is coming. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Preach it, sister. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I shared that because I think we only see our little our little space yeah. just where yeah. we are. Oh, people aren't witnessing. People aren't getting saved. But people are getting saved. Yeah. People are yeah. witnessing. Yep. And so too. that's exciting. It sure is. Yep. All right. All right. So let's see. That was question seven, verse five. And then verse six. What what happened when they uh when they heard that sound? What did, there's a multitude there. A lot of who knows how many people there? Tons of people there. What multitude came together? What what did they think when they, they heard that sound? Bewildered. They were bewildered. bewildered. What, what's that, Barb? So they didn't know what to say. Yeah. I don't know. Well, think about that. You know, put yourself in their shoes. That would have that would have been, I don't know, pretty crazy. First first you hear that violent wind, then you see these tongues of fire on everybody, and then you hear them talking in different languages. Bewildered. Somebody thought a bomb went off up in that room. Huh. Well, look, look what caused them to be bewildered. I, I would think I'd be, well, first I'd be bewildered because of the noise and then what I saw, but here's what was uh, bewildering them in verse six. What was what was bewildering them? Each were talking in their language. They're hearing them talk in their own language, which, if yeah. Now, I don't know who, let's see, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm assuming that's everybody that was in the, uh, maybe that's why the people were bewildered with the with the languages, because may, if, it was probably only those in the upper room that were filled with the Holy Spirit. So maybe the ones, yeah, when the sound occurred, the multitude came together. So that's probably what happened. Okay, so there's probably, uh -huh. how many, what's that, Jim? It, it was, I was kind of thinking that maybe it was only the um, basically the 11 at that particular time, or the, the 12 disciples. It, yeah, it's hard to say. It just says they were all together. Um, well, 120 up in that room, remember? That was, yeah, that was seven or eight days before Pentecost. Yeah, it's hard to say. They were all together. It, it's, I'm guessing it was probably the 120. I think that's the assumption that was always made that it was 120 in that room. Were the tongues of fire on all 120? Yeah. Well, whoever was there, it appeared yeah. on all of them. The tongues of fire were not outside that room. Right. Obviously. Yeah, it said it filled the whole house. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So I'm 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 assuming that it was just the 120 that were inside the house. I'm finding it hard to believe, knowing how the, what the buildings were like in Jerusalem, that they could put 120 in a room. Yeah, maybe it wasn't the upper room like we assume it is was. Yeah, I don't know. It said, well, remember oh, back in maybe not. <clears throat> back in Luke, it said it was a large furnished room. I don't know what large would be back then, but yeah, that, that is a good point. You know, how big would the room be? I don't know. But we know there was 120 of them back in at the end of Acts chapter well, one. Some of our restaurants that can seat 100 people. Yeah. I don't know. And that's not that. That's not the biggest restaurant. Yeah. I have no doubt that those 120 people were in one room, as it said. Well, Acts one fifteen. There's 120 there. Peter stood up. Let's see. Were they still in the room? Let's see. Acts one thirteen. Acts one thirteen. They were in the upper room, and it talks about the eleven plus the women, Mary and, his, and the brothers. And then Peter, at that time, Peter stood up in the midst of the brethren, gathering one hundred twenty. I'm assuming they were all in the same room, but I don't know. Uh -huh. But anyway, they were bewildered because they heard the disciples speaking in their own in a, in their own languages. Right. So it was everybody in the room that was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the, the great crowd, the great multitude, they heard the noise. So they gathered together. So they wanted to know what this noise was. So they're gathering around. So maybe they're outside by this time. Maybe, 
the the crowd the crowd apparently was outside so yeah they heard the noise they gathered together they were bewildered because they heard each one speaking in their own language so i'm assuming the however many were in the, in the building whether it was 120 or whether it was the 12 plus the women and brothers and sisters anyway they probably went outside and the multitude heard the noise they came and the, the all the yeah. people with the holy spirit were speaking in these other languages and the people were bewildered mm. yes it was the people outside because it says yeah. in five now they were dwelling in jerusalem devout men from every name, and at this sound number six, the multitudes right. came together and they were built wilter. So at the sound, probably everybody came that was outside came to wherever they were, and they came right. outside. Right. You know, and I often thought, well, maybe they're speaking in their own language, but the hearer and hearing in their the, own language. Right, hearing in their own language, and they were amazed. Look at verse seven. They were amazed, saying, Aren't these all? They're speaking like no Galileans because they knew what the remember, remember the Galilean accent was distinct because remember that's how they knew Peter was mm -hmm. a Galilean. Remember when Jesus was arrested, they say, Oh, well, you know, we, your speech gives you away. Probably, you know, probably like someone from uh Kentucky with their you know southern draw, it's not probably something like that. They they could tell they were from Galilee because of their their dialect. So so I don't know whether it was 120, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, they're all Galileans. They're probably speaking in that that Aramaic dialect, Jewish Aramaic dialect. And they were amazed. They were bewildered. How can it be? Well, Galileans probably weren't known to be uh, well-educated. So how in the world would they know all these different languages? Mm -hmm. If they're coming here from 15 different countries and here... They're all hearing it in their own language. I'm assuming each one. I can imagine if it was a hot time in the year that they had all the windows open too. Mm -hmm. It would have been. They have windows. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, I don't people, know. People I don't were... know. I mean, you know, all that what you see on TV, they all like play whatever, no windows. <laughs> well, it would have been. See, Passover would be around our Easter time, so that's probably what March, and then this would be. 50 days after so that's what two two months later so march april may so it's probably about this time of year this time of year probably somewhere around may so anyway um so they heard the noise they gathered around they were amazed they were hearing all these galileans speaking their own language if there's 15 different nations there i'm assuming that it was 15 different languages so if there was 120 people i don't know if that means some of them spoke I'm assuming each one was only speaking in one language, but I don't know. But anyway, they're hearing them in their own language. They were amazed because aren't these all Galileans? Galileans weren't known to be multilingual. They were they only had one language. So how is it that each one of us were hearing in our own language in which we were born? And then, and then it lists all the 15 nations. So I'm assuming each one of those 15 different languages. Well, imagine when Peter spoke, they understood him. True. That's a good point. So maybe, yeah, maybe each one, they were just speaking. Yeah, they were they were speaking whatever, Aramaic, like you and I speaking English, and whatever, mm -hmm. and everyone was hearing it in their own language. They I don't think each one, I don't know. Is that what you're assuming? They I mean they were speaking probably Judean era or uh Aramaic. And it came out, or however it came to everyone's ears in their own language. Is that? The 15 of the 120 had to be speaking the language. Well, yeah, either, either they were speaking that language or they were, or just where it entered their ears, it hmm. God translated. Well, they hear Because it's just like us, when we hear a word, we hear what we hear, right? Everybody might hear something different. Right when the Holy Spirit, you're in a, we're in a congregation, and and pastor brings a word, mm -hmm. it may enter into our hearts each person differently, mm -hmm. and we might hear something different. Right, how God is speaking to each of us. True, it's an I mean, anointed I mean, word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I can use that as an analogy. Um, 
but they were definitely hearing in their own language. So whether the, whether yes. the Galileans were yeah. speaking Aramaic and what they were hearing was their own language or whether, you know, the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in those different languages. I don't know. I guess we can debate that. That's what I would say, yeah, we're okay. But I would say because the Holy Spirit can take whatever pastor is saying on that on that pulpit yeah. and interpret it to each of us mm. where we are. Yeah. So, you know, Holy mm. Spirit can do a lot of things. Okay. I'll yeah. Well, that's a good point. Because you you hear I, I've I've heard uh you know pastors testify, you know, someone come up to him and said, Oh, you, you know, that's just what I need to hear, and they, they explain what what they heard and the pastor's thinking well i don't remember saying that that's or, not what i <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so yeah i guess yeah i guess you have a good point there but anyway they were hearing they were however the holy spirit did it they were hearing in their own language and what were they hearing according to verse 11 oh. The mighty deeds of God. The mighty works of God. Mighty works of God. Mighty deeds of God. So I don't know what, the, you know, whether they were, I don't know, if they were just started speaking the gospel and and the Holy Spirit translated how that, I don't know how that would have worked. Because it was said it was the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. I think it was talking, they were telling all the miracles that Jesus did as proof that he was God. Possibly. Yeah. I think Peter mm -hmm. leans to that in his sermon, maybe later. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. So, yeah, they were amazed because they were Galileans. And, yeah, uh, that reference to John 1, that was where, was it Nathan said, can anything good come out of Nazareth, which is out of Galilee? And in John 7, Jesus said that... Uh, Let's see. Oh, John 7, they said, no prophet comes out of Galilee. Let's see. Yeah, the seven, let's see, one, two, three, there's what? Seven fishermen were from Galilee. The Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, Philip, Nathaniel. Oh, something uh, interesting. Judas was not from Galilee. I don't know if he was the only one that was not from Galilee, but I thought that was... Kind of interesting because I was looking to see which ones were from from Galilee. The the fishermen were all from Galilee. That's where they fished, the Sea of Galilee. But Judas was not from Galilee. I'm not sure what the significance of that is, but hmm. all right. So they were speaking the mighty deeds of of God. And remember, in verse eight, Acts one eight, Jesus said, "You'll receive power to be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you." So there they were. There you see it demonstrated the power to be his witnesses. So, yeah, yeah go ahead, Jim. I just thought of something. Uh -huh. We were talking about the different nationalities. Uh -huh. uh, I know I'm backing up. Yeah, it's fine. We forget that Jews were all over the world because of captivities and, and, and whatnot. So they were dispersed. So they were coming to the feast. Right. They didn't all live in Jerusalem, so they would come with different languages. Okay. Um, and yeah, and they were probably were they dispersed because of persecution, or what was what caused the dispersion? Yeah, we know they were kept. They were captive back back in Babylon. Remember when the Babylonian, even when the Babylonian captivity ended, they did not all return. Remember, it was no, only a remnant didn't. that returned. So. Maybe that's part of it. Through all the various captivities, they a lot of them stayed in their in the countries where they were captive. That that could be. Hmm. So, and we're going to see as we go through Acts with the persecution. It's going to cause the disciples to be dispersed as well. The gospel God's going to use persecution to disperse the the gospel, to disperse the disciples into the world. You know we which is kind of interesting. Yeah, we think, all oh, persecution is a bad thing, but it actually God uses it to spread the gospel. Uh, all right. Is that, that's probably a good place to stop. What's our, what's our big takeaway? Anybody have any insights to share? Oh, hello, Aisha. I didn't welcome you. S sorry. 
to me, don't underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. I think I've heard Barb quote that once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody <laughs> else? What's your takeaway, Jamie? Um, the the wind really in Numo. I really liked that you tied that together. Mm -hmm. I did look up Numo, um, all Numo all numerology, Numoology. Okay. I can't say it. Yeah. And that's interesting. The study of the Holy Spirit and um the Trinity. So the wind is um my takeaway. Yeah, his power yeah. in the wind. Okay. Thank you. How about you, Aisha? Okay, sorry, you're working. Uh -huh. She's working, so she's just listening. All right, thank you. I'm glad you joined us. Well, this is considered the birth of the church, isn't it? I, I, I'd say so. Oh, yeah. And Jesus certainly brought it in in dramatic <clears throat> fashion in a way that the world would never forget. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your takeaway, Joyce? Well, I just think where it was mentioned, the mighty wind, mm -hmm. and also the fire on each one. When I think of wind, we can't control it. Just like today, like you mentioned the word tornado, mm -hmm. people that deal with things like this that are only God Good. we can't begin to control fire yeah. really or the mighty winds and it's just Amen. showing it was already meant mighty power of god that's a good point and he you know they you know, got a message didn't they the church will prevail in the end mm -hmm. the church will never be overcome because of jesus yeah yeah and remember well as you're saying that i'm thinking remember on that in the storm when the disciples were out in the storm and and mm -hmm. Jesus calmed the storm, they said, what manner of man is this that even the wind obeys him? Yeah. And really tied that in with the with the Holy Spirit, but he even can calm the wind. Amen. Yeah, we sure can't. Um, a, a little question. Yeah. Remember, it said it sound like a mighty rushing wind, so it didn't have the wind with it. True, that's a good point. It was like a sound like yeah. Oh, okay. True. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. It would have blown the house down, probably. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. that's a real good point. Sounded like. Yeah. Oh wow. It that's pretty good. It came as a yeah. Song. That is, I like. It came as a soft breeze, Jim and Thang, with the big Christ like, hmm. but, yeah. but it sounded like a violent wind. Hmm. I like that, Jim. Yeah. Well, and remember, was it Elijah or Elisha when you know the Lord was not in the wind and he heard the still, still small voice? Remember that? There was a yep. mighty rushing wind, but the Lord was not in the wind. He was in the still small voice. Oh. So, so I wonder if that's. Hmm, I have to look at that, see if there's any parallels there to the to the Holy Spirit, because it was a sound like a violent rushing wind. Sounded like a wind. I'm talking wow. about yeah, I mean, yeah, go ahead, Barb. Estimating the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, that would have been, I guess, the disciples' first real experience of that, because when Jesus said to them, You're gonna be witnesses all over, I wonder how many of them thought, uh, well. How many languages do we all know? So hmm. yeah, right there, we have it. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Figure hmm. how they're going to be witnesses everywhere when they couldn't speak all the languages. That's a good point. Hmm. Yeah, how are we going to do this to the other most parts of the world? Well, how are they going to understand me? Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I have you ever heard testimonies of that where someone goes to a foreign country and they don't know the language and yet they they start speaking the gospel and someone hears it in their own language i've i've heard that in modern day i've heard that i never witnessed heard that too. yeah i've never witnessed it but i've heard that well jim another thing the supernaturalness i don't know if that's a word but how supernatural 
this church was born. Mm -hmm. And I think about when I was saved, how supernatural that occurrence mm -hmm. was. You know, it's very personal, mm -hmm. but um, it's like a little church is born, you know, when we're saved, maybe. I, mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking, but, I, mm -hmm. you know, it just is very supernatural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and he comes to dwell in you. It certainly is a supernatural experience. Mm -hmm. Born of the Spirit of God. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Anybody else? Mom, what's your takeaway? Well, Jesus promised his disciples that they would receive power from on high. Mm -hmm. I think it's the beginning of the church when the Holy Spirit comes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think he he fulfilled that promise, didn't he? Yeah. All right. Anybody else? The sound of the <clears throat> I guess. Go ahead. Yeah. I think my my takeaway was to be a witness. Um, it's about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then to testify is to tell about what Jesus did for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wrote that in the side. It must have been something you said that made me write that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kim. Go ahead, Jim. The, um, the reason I mentioned about the sound of the mighty rushing wind when I worked in Louisiana and Hurricane Allen was coming to the Gulf, we were all lashed to the deck. We would have been taken overboard. The wind was horrific. Hmm. We were powerless. So I can just imagine what would have happened there if the wind had matched the sound. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I guess that's another takeaway for me. I want to find out what that what, what that means, guy. Holy Spirit, what's that mean, sound of a mighty Russian woman? Tell us, tell us, tell us. <laughs> I like that. It, yeah, it's a mystery. Um, mm -hmm. My version says there came a sound from heaven. Mm -hmm. And that, like, we don't hear from heaven often. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are waiting. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. Yeah. What version is that, Jamie? That's New King James Version. Mm -hmm. okay. Not my favorite. I mean, I like it. My mom got it for me. I use it, but um, it's all I have in front of me. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. That's a cool version. Sounded yeah. like a mighty Russian wind. Okay. Anyone else? Someone like to pray for us? What was your takeaway, Elder Jim? My takeaway? Well, yeah. Jesus fulfilled his promise. He gave them power to be his witnesses when, when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And he fulfilled that promise in each one of us, gave us power to be his witnesses. So I want to go out and be a witness this week. Okay. That's my takeaway. Yes. Someone want to pray for us? I will. Thanks, Jim. Father. This side of eternity, we know that we don't have all the answers. But you told us in Corinthians that, that one day we'll know. We look forward to that. In the meantime, Lord, we pray that you will continue to open our minds, to grasp the fullness of your word, to allow it to do its perfect work in our lives. We can obey the mandate and tell as many as we can before you return, for we know it's near.
go with us now as we step back into our reality that we'll be careful to accomplish your will in everything we attempt. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Have a blessed night, everybody. All right. You too. See you next Good week. Back. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.